Sammy, uh, thank you, thank you for joining me today. Thank you um, for having me. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to to get some time with you, um, and to just be able to learn about your career journey. Um, from what I already know, it's been quite an adventure, uh, and I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about that today. Um, and we're going to roll back all the way to the start. Sure. And uh, I know life for you started off in in Istanbul. Yeah. Um, maybe you could tell us a bit about about that time in your life. Sure. Uh, probably there is one part before Istanbul, how I come there. It yeah. was my childhood. Uh, mm -hmm. Wasn't the, maybe the luckiest one. Uh, losing my father very early ages when I yeah. was four, having a stepfather and going through significant financial difficulties and not a very happy home environment. So that was the first part. Yeah. Uh, but I think that part ended up with helping me to grow further and get more resilience about those difficulties. Because sometimes you think you are the were uh, unlucky person because of those difficulties, but you yeah. don't realize how much they help you to grow. And Absolutely. this is what happened to me, uh, because I pick, rather than being a victim of the situation, create my happy zone and, and fight yeah. for it. And that helped me to get really good results in multiple aspects of sports, leading and coaching some sport class, which I really learned about life relationships and even the leadership itself as well as uh, working really hard to go to Istanbul for a good university. Because yep. at that time, I'm originally from Turkey. If you are not rich from family, which I wasn't, yep. and if you don't have a really good education, life will be miserable, really, yep. really tough. Yep. So getting a good, good education was my only chance to survive. So this is why I pushed myself really hard those years. And I ended up in Istanbul with my university life, which was my second chapter in yeah. life. So that was my starting point. I, I did hear on a, there was another podcast you were on recently and you were talking about actually how you didn't have any siblings. Yes. Um, and you actually, as a young child, had to go and kind of create those connections and friendships. Yeah. Um, which I thought was really interesting. And I thought there's probably a lot of translatable skills that you learned at that age that you've taken through into adult life. Would, would, sure. would, would that be fair? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I think one of the best things having siblings that you can have whatever the fight you have with them, yep. and next morning you'll wake up with them again. <laughs> yeah. They are still around you. Whereas with your friends, with your peers, you have to manage your relationship. You have to learn mm. how to create long-term trusted relationships, but also ongoing relationships. Yeah. So that was my number one thing, uh, being really cautious how I'm interacting with people, yeah. and I'm not losing them but I'm winning them because I didn't have a good support. I was living in my mm. stepfather's city, no relatives, no cousins, That's right. like literally nobody. I had a sick mother at that time going through a series of operations and I wasn't sure she will make it. Yeah. And almost every night I was sneaking in her room just to listen if she's still alive oh. so that I can relax and, and go to sleep. And I was just seven, eight years old, mm. those years. And I'm not a good support uh, within the home. So this is why I decided to go out and create my happy zone yeah. and start achieving things. So I end up with multiple sports, drama clubs. Mm. And after a couple of years, as I get the confidence, um, I start leading some of these activities, like a younger age groups, coaching them, leading them. Uh, but there was one problem. When I come to the last year at high school, yep. I realized that I am very, very behind academically. <laughs> yeah. uh, because the first trial exam make it so clear, I'm not even in the list. They yep. didn't put me in the list not to shame because they don't want to put the last ones. Yep. Uh, and that was my red alarm. So I have to make a decision at that time, stop everything I do and just focus on studying, yep. which was very hard because I didn't used to study. I didn't have the fundamentals. I have to ask a lot of help yep. from my teachers and others, but also locking myself in, in the house. Right. And uh, when my friends knocking the door, uh, not even opening the door, because I know yeah. that they will convince me to go out, yeah. that was my day gone. Uh, but also keep studying. I developed some strategies, and, and one of them was going and buying a beautiful picture of Istanbul. Mm. One for my desk, yeah. in front of my desk, and when I was studying, my head's down and I'm really bored, I struggle, take my head up and seeing that beautiful picture yeah. and say that you have to keep studying, you have to be there. Yep. is the place because I was visualizing yeah, right. uh, the different version of myself. And if I fail on that exam, uh, on that first test, I start walking out of the room and the second poster, beautiful poster of Islam, was at the back side of my door. Yeah. So I saw <laughs> that and then go back. Go back to your yeah. study. You have to be there. Otherwise, you'll miss out. So after a very hard 
period, uh, mm. I was able to get a really, really high score, being number one in the whole region. So I could pick oh, wow. anything, any really subject, uh, medicine, law, you name it. So, so why, um, so God, there's so much to unpack there, but I'm just curious, why, why did you pick tech? Let's, let's start with that question. Um, look, uh, science, I think. to be honest, I haven't even seen a computer since yep. that time. We are talking about 1985. Yep. Nobody has computers in their homes, only big corporates. Yeah. So I have no idea what's the meaning of like a computer engineering. Uh, but my decision criteria was, one, I'm going to Istanbul, I work so hard, I have to have some fun over there. So it shouldn't <laughs> be something I'm killing myself through study. Yep. So I just eliminated medicine a couple of hours because those requires a lot of studying and memorizing, yep. not for me. It should be fun. And engineering is fun because you solve problems, yep. which is very interesting. But also I learned that computer engineering will be the future of uh, all the job families. And then you can get a get job, you can get a good money that was the way to go for me. So yeah. easy to study, I mean, relatively easy, yeah. uh, still an engineering degree, uh, able to get a job and a good pay. That was my criteria. Yeah, fantastic. And I think it's still valid today. Yeah, like I think, I, absolutely. I, I think it's just interesting, you know, particularly the mid 80s, this would have been. Um, it, as you say, it wasn't popular. Most people hadn't seen a computer. No. Certainly at home, there maybe was starting to appear in schools around that time, maybe not. Um, so it's pretty bold decision, almost a kind of futurist outlook yeah. that, that, that you took. And